scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Lift your hands, lift your voices and give Him praise enthroned in glory enthroned in honor enthroned in power the one who defines the boundaries of all things without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and that life was the light of men Blessings and honor, glory and power be ascribed unto you, ancient king. Someone bless his name. The all-wise God, exalted above the nations of the earth. We worship, we bow our hearts and our lives before you. Jesus matchless name we have prayed ask him for an encounter by his spirit give me a definite encounter go ahead and pray now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. The Bible says he shall receive a blessing from the Lord, righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek thee, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you, not just tell you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Hallelujah. There is a realm of knowledge that starts by admitting your limitation. When you admit that you are limited as far as ascending that dimension is concerned, that awareness sponsors your motivation to call lord help me i know but not enough help me i see but not enough we see in part first corinthians 8 and verse 2 and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know there is a benchmark in the spirit that translates to every result desired there is a light requirement is fixed and non-negotiable just because you have light does not mean you have light enough to be able to translate those spiritual realities into your experience someone cry for light tonight my heart is open my spirit is prepared to access superior light that was the true light 
which lighted every man that was the true light someone prayed light from heaven light from heaven coming with glory light from heaven bringing understanding light from heaven allowing for ascendance in the spirit light even among the stars he said one different from another in glory in glory maybe not in size but in glory that among the stars one different from another in glory hallelujah praise the name of the lord I just felt stirred in my spirit before coming while I was praying preparing for this meeting I started sensing a very strong manifestation of the healing anointing and I know that the miracle service is next week yes but but you see the thing about the path of the spirit is that the Bible says the Holy Spirit has a unique ability to search the mind of the father no man knows what is in the spirit of man the heart of man save the spirit of that man the holy spirit has unrestrained access into the heart of the father and he's able to draw out that which is consistent with his will the entire economy of the kingdom revolves around the will of god so at every given point hallelujah the kingdom operates with respect to that which God desires per time and per season. Any action that is outside the will of God at any given time, even if it is good, is time rebellion. Rebellion is not necessarily evil. Rebellion is any activity that is not sponsored and motivated, whose goal and intent is not actualizing the will of God. A very good project can be rebellion when it is brought within the lens of the will of God. So it is important to be organized, but it is also important to be discerning. It says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what you will say unto me. Hallelujah. Let me just speak a word over those who are trusting God for healing. I've explained to you the necessity of the healing ministry. The healing anointing is a unique and gracing of God to the body because according to the dealings of God with man as revealed in scripture every man is only given the privilege of one body per lifetime please listen you are only given the privilege of your spirit being hosted in one body and what you call lifetime is the moment from birth until the day you are done with your assignment and you transit in glory or until the day your body deteriorates to the extent to which it no longer can host your spirit there is a health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body and when your body is deteriorated beyond a certain threshold it was designed in the dealings of God that the spirit will have to leave hallelujah so every time the devil plagues you with sickness it is a measure of death attempting to be administered to your body the assignment of the healing anointing is to bring your body back to the will of god and to help sponsor longevity a body has thou prepared for me hallelujah when you understand this your heart will be open to receive the healing power of jesus please lay your hands whether for you or for your loved ones even if it is for one person let's honor this instruction and then we'll go to the teaching of tonight. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, ah, Lord, I believe, such great anointing. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe. 
Lord, I believe. I rebuke that spirit of infirmity right now. I command every devil that has found its way into the bodies of God's people. Eye conditions, blood conditions, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I stretch my hands by faith from nation to nation, region to region. We bring you life even by the Spirit. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Cancer be healed now. Migraines be healed now. Eye conditions be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. Peptic ulcer be healed now. Bone conditions be healed now. Terminal diseases of all sorts in the name of Jesus be healed now. And we pray for those who are lying down upon the bed of affliction. May the same power that raised Christ from the dead translated him from Hades and brought him back to the earth I declare that same power will take you from the bed of affliction and keep you standing on your feet now in the name of Jesus Christ and everyone who came here with any kind of discomfort by whatever name it is called and identified in the name of Jesus I speak to you the resurrected king the one who has risen, the resurrection and the life. He ministers life to your body now. Quickening to your body now. Brand new organs by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we have prayed. Please be seated. Good evening. God bless you. You're welcome to church. This is the house of God and it is always a profound honor to serve God's people with the truth of his word because um, I've always said that the church is a very potent force as far as societal transformation is concerned. Hallelujah. The church has a unique convergence of people that represent all walks of life. Hallelujah. The legal practitioner has no business administering medical solutions to a sick patient because they are confined. They are limited to the judiciary. A doctor has no business standing to do a judicial work, for instance. So all other fields are limited and they are mandated by the laws that govern their profession to remain and restrict themselves within the jurisdiction of their practice. But the church and the ministry of the word, as we know, has a unique ability to serve people from all walks of life. And this is very important. It then means that any society at any given time is largely a product of the orientation that comes especially from the church among many other religious institutions because many people fight their decisions hence the consequences that come from those decisions will be a reflection of the limitation of the man of God so the Bible mandates that we study to show ourselves approved unto God walk men that need not to be ashamed even as we rightly divide the word. It is the reason why God has coordinated all grace that is required for our sufficiency so that when we stand to serve God's people, both those who are here online and the many across the nations of the earth, that even though we are trapped in human frail vessels, but that there is the activity of the Holy Spirit that can help us to be to serve the truths of the kingdom with accuracy and with confidence hallelujah this is very important 
I take my job as a man of God very seriously because I understand not only am I accountable unto God, but when God gives you the gift of influence, influence, I told you, is a very delicate product. With it, you can destroy and with it, you can build. Hallelujah. Yes. So when people become obedient to the faith and loyal to that which God communicates through you, you must ensure that you are serving the people truths indeed, life applicable, destiny changing truths. Hallelujah. And I can assure you by God that there is no week you will come here and then leave with your time being wasted. Hallelujah. That every time you come here, you can be sure that you will be served the truth of God's word with power, with grace. You will live wiser. You will live more engraced, more strategically positioned to number one, live an effective spiritual life and then that it translates to every aspect of your life. You believe that? Shout aloud. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want you to lend me your attention, lend me your dedicated focus as we teach there are times that Jesus would say, Verily, verily, I say unto you. There are other times he would say, Hearken unto me. He would demand their attention because of the preciousness of what he wants to say. Hallelujah. When it has to do with the ministry of the word, you can be Mary or you can be Martha. Martha was worried about so many things and Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and you are... Um, angry about you know Mary's not standing up to come and help you he says but one thing is needful and that Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet hallelujah you need to learn to sit at his feet and give your destiny dedicated focus when it has to do with the ministry of the word in the name of Jesus the son of the living God knowing God accurately Please write it down, knowing God accurately. Tonight, I want to show us prophetically the biblical roadmap to knowing God and attaining stature and power and grace in the spirit. Hallelujah. There is a way God designed himself to be known as far as the world of men is concerned. And it is important for us to know how God prescribed that he's explored and known so that we're not in confusion learning God in very wrong ways and then arriving at many erroneous conclusions about God and that will be to the detriment of our Christian experience. Hallelujah. Are we together? Now, generally speaking, the Bible lets us know that when it has to do with reigning in life, reigning upon the earth, the Bible says that the requirement is number one, that you must become a graceful recipient of the gift of righteousness. And then number two, abundance of grace. The Bible says that they who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, he leaves them with an assurance that they are the kinds of believers who will reign in life. Abundance of grace and then the gift of righteousness. Romans 5.17 That if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness only comes through Jesus Christ, believing in his substitutionary sacrifice, hallelujah. And then the Bible says that when it has to do with dominion upon the earth, you do not just need grace, you need abundance of grace. It's important that you have that at the back of your mind. And then of course you know that the Bible says grace and peace. This same grace that the Bible says we need a lavish proportion of. It says grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. Hallelujah. So there is a connection between the abundance of grace and the abundance of knowledge. That grace and peace, Second Peter 1 from verse 2, is multiplied through knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. In this case, the knowledge of God 
and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please take note. The knowledge of God. There are many things that do not minister grace, even though they are knowledge. There is an exact body of truth that translates to grace. The Bible says grace and peace. Please keep that scripture. It's not just multiplied through the knowledge of many good things. It has to be the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So there are many kinds of knowledge that are not necessarily a waste. But when it has to do with accessing grace as designed in this kingdom, it is the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means the more you know God and his son Jesus Christ, the more in deed and in experience you will access grace. Hallelujah. This is very important. John 17 and verse 3. The Bible says, and this is eternal life. Jesus is praying that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. The experience of eternal life, the activation of the full potential of that which is captured in the Zoe life is dependent on the knowledge of the true God and Jesus whom he has sent. This is very important. In this kingdom, knowledge is essential as far as walking in dominion and walking in victory is concerned. No matter how well intentioned you are, if and when you decide to dwell in ignorance, there is no hope for walking in the reality of the life of God. Hallelujah. It's important for us to understand this. Now, Matthew chapter 16, let's begin with a very interesting discussion between Jesus and the disciples from verse 13. It wasn't unusual for Jesus to probe the disciples understanding by asking them questions and he would leave them to just argue among themselves and then eventually he would clarify. This was one of such moments. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, the Bible says he asked the disciples saying, who do men say? that I, the Son of Man, am. Hallelujah. Isn't it interesting? You would think he already answered his question because he called himself the Son of Man. You would think that was the answer. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That means he was looking for something else. There was something he wanted them to understand. Verse 14. The Bible says, They said, Some say you are John the Baptist. Hmm. Some say you are Elias, Elijah now, and others say you are Jeremiah. And some are even confused. They don't know. They just said you are one of the prophets. So Jesus is asking a question here. Who do men say that I am? In other words, I want to buy from the perspective of society. What do they think of me when they see me work miracles, when they see me multiply bread, when they see me teach and communicate doctrine with power? What is their conclusion about my person? And the disciples said, this is a very good question because we've also been asking, some say you are John the Baptist because at that time, John had been beheaded. Are we together now? So probably they think you are an incarnate. Maybe you came again you know, and so on and so forth. Others, you know, because they know again that there is a spiritual protocol they have been taught that men can come in the spirit and power of certain graces and certain mantles and they believe that you are one of those prophets and others believe you are Jeremiah. And Jesus now said, okay, you've worked with me. You have enjoyed the privilege of intimacy. You are closer to me than those who are afar. He says, but whom say ye? that I am. Very important question. We're stopping at 15. But whom say ye? In other words, I'm interested in you. Show me the advantage that your intimacy with me has done as far as redefining my person to you. Now you have an advantage that they do not have. They are speaking as people who are from afar. So we can permit and forgive them because they are speaking from the lens of their ignorance alongside the distance in relationship. But now you have had the privilege to be mentored directly by me. What is your conclusion in light of the advantage of intimacy? And the disciples were surprised that even though they enjoyed access and they enjoyed intimacy, the truth is that they did not know him. The same experience of those from afar was their experience even though they were close. 
and it was only Peter speaking by the Spirit. He never said, we know. He said, I know whom thou art. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. He never called him Jesus. You see, so he was speaking not in the flesh because he was never called Jesus until the word became flesh. Are we together now? Yes. He never called him Jesus. Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, verse 17, he said, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood. That means this revelation does not reside within the realm of flesh and blood. But my father, and then he continues, now he mentions the word church. I just wanted you to understand that it is very important that in the believer's journey to growth, to stature, and living out the fullness of your prophetic destiny when it has to do with the subject of knowledge you must be guided no wonder Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit said in John 16 give us verse 8 please or verse 13 let's just go to verse 13 for sake of time how be it in fact verse 12 says I have many things to tell you Jesus is speaking but ye cannot bear them now do you know what that means the spiritual equipping that will make my word spirit and life to you you do not yet have it are we together yes I have stretched your ability to receive without the assistance of the Holy Spirit I cannot go further if you must understand anything from this point there is the activity of regeneration and the infilling of the spirit that must happen the other things I have taught you is what Paul brought in the Pauline epistle. There was no way they would have understood the dynamics of redemption and how to live the victorious life in that state. They had to be translated and God raised Paul to be a continuation of those things that Jesus told them you cannot bear them now. The teachings of Paul, even for Peter and the disciples, though mentored by Jesus, they acknowledged that these sayings were hard. So it would have sounded like nonsense if Jesus tried to say it. Are we together now? Yes. But knowledge is very important in this kingdom. Now, I have taught you and I want you to please listen. I repeat myself many times for the sake of emphasis. There are six dimensions of knowledge the believer must pursue six dimensions of spiritual knowledge if you want to understand the scope of not just knowing God there are many kinds of knowledge that are useful some are supportive knowledge please listen before you write there are two levels of knowledge generally for the believer there is what we call foundational knowledge and there is what we call supportive knowledge supportive knowledge means when the foundation is there they come as an added advantage to sponsor your stability are we together if you do not have a foundational knowledge no matter what you get as supportive knowledge your christian experience will be lopsided let me give you six of them very quickly Number one, according to scripture, especially the Pauline epistle, we are taught that these six foundational, I'm not just talking of doctrine like Hebrews 6, no. No, I'm not talking of foundational doctrine. I'm talking that in your pursuit of knowledge, that means if you see a believer now who is saved and tells you that I want, I want to act to contend for spiritual knowledge, if you want to guide that person, at first, you restrict that person's pursuing knowledge to these six dimensions. Are you ready? Number one, that you must know God and Jesus, his son. This, according to the Pauline epistle, is the correct protocol for approaching spiritual knowledge. You must know God and then Jesus, his son. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Please write it. We're walking this. There's so much to cover. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. That means at the point where you begin to pursue the knowledge of God, you are truly having spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. In 1 Peter chapter, I mean in um, Daniel 11.32, popular scripture, the B part says, but the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. There is an advantage to knowing God. I like Ephesians 1.15 to 19. This is Paul again. This is our Paul again. 
mentoring the church in Ephesus. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all saints, verse 16, reading to 19, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer, 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, watch this now, the spirit of the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him not the knowledge of it the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding verse 18 says being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power so six dimensions of knowledge when you want to pursue genuine spiritual growth and maturity you must know god and jesus christ his son number two you must know yourself in light of who christ is you must know yourself in light of who christ is psalm 49 and 20 very powerful scripture the bible says man that is in honor and understandeth not is like a beast that perisheth hallelujah second only to knowing god it is important that in pursuing growth and maturity as revealed by scripture you must know yourself in light of who god is hallelujah in first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 very powerful scripture it tells us that we are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him that has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light hallelujah when you read ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 6 just write for sake of um, um for sake of time Paul took out time there to begin to give us a very theological background as to the implication. I have taught you here that from a theological standpoint, every time you discuss man with respect to what Christ has done, there are only two things that become the basis of your discussion. Number one is our oneness with Christ, the implication of our oneness. And number two, our positional advantage. Are we together now? On account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ, man has been brought into oneness. The Bible says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. And then Paul helped us to understand our positional advantage. That that word together or together with Christ is a very profound prophetic description of the believer's position now in light of what has happened. So you need to know who you are in light of of who christ is number three you need to know your place in destiny and in god's prophetic program i have taught you this it's very important you need to know your place your relevance is in your ability to keep and maintain your position the provisions that are accorded your life are with respect to knowing your place it's very important you must know your place in God's program, you must know your place in destiny. Luke 4, 16 and 17, Jesus in the temple, reading the messianic prophecy that was about him. The Bible says he found where it was written concerning him. And then at the end of that rendition, he said, today is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Hebrews 10 and 7 says, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god hallelujah it's very very important every believer must be trained to know your place in god's de in destiny and in god's prophetic program number four that the second the fourth um <clears throat> dimension of knowledge is that you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom this is very important you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom job 38 33 to 35 write it for reference knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth a discussion between god and job psalm 82 and verse 5 popular scripture here 
they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course matthew 13 11 jesus is still teaching for it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven hallelujah the kingdom operates using a modus operandi. There is a pattern. There is a principle. And every time you want to see the glory of God revealed, there is um, a mandate upon you that you must know the ways of God. Number five, what is the fifth dimension of knowledge? If you must press into an excelling spiritual life, you must understand man as the highest of God's creation, and then you must understand the world system, the cosmos. It is not enough to understand the principles of the kingdom. You must understand man as the zenith, the highest of God's creation. And then you must understand the cosmos. This is important. When we discuss this, we considered Psalm 8 from verse 1 to 6. Remember? Psalm 8, 1 to 6. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name, he says. All of that, when I consider the works of your hands and all of that, when we get to verse 5, he now says, What is man? Or verse 4, What is man that thou art mindful of him, not the son of man that thou visitest him? I hope we're still together. I'm showing you that if you want to explore your spiritual growth, it is important that you follow this sequence. Otherwise, something will be lopsided as far as your spiritual understanding is concerned. You must know man because this is the world of men. Psalm 115 verse 16. The Bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. If you must excel in the cosmos, you need to understand the world of men. Hallelujah. In fact, in Matthew 10, 16, I believe, Jesus was teaching them. And you notice when Jesus began to teach, if you study the Beatitudes theologically, Jesus began to teach them relating the kingdom with and contrasting it with the cosmos. There were times where he would teach them things that were largely eternal and spiritual but in many instances he would now delve to help them understand the cosmos this was one of such discussions behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves he says be ye therefore wise as serpents all through scripture a serpent has always been associated with evil satan the devil are we together now and here Jesus is saying that you need to borrow the wisdom of the serpent and the character of the dove if you must excel in the cosmos. Very strange teaching. For the simple information that you are a sheep in the midst of wolves, he says there are two dimensions of wisdom and approach you must have. You need to be as wise as a serpent and you need to be as harmless as a dove. And the only place in scripture where you learn the wisdom of the serpent is Egypt. You will have to go to Egypt to learn the wisdom of the serpent. Hallelujah. And the Bible says as harmless as a dove. So number six, very quickly. What is the final dimension of knowledge that the believer must have? You must know your adversary, the devil. I'm doing a recap for those of us who have been following the series, but this is important. I need to say this so you understand what I'm explaining today. You must know your adversary, the devil. The devil is not your friend? No, sir. The devil is not a confidant. The Bible calls him the thief, John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief. A description that Jesus himself gave many bad names Satan is called he's called a murderer he's called an accuser of the brethren he's called a thief in this case that he comes except he does not come except to steal to kill and to destroy first Peter chapter 5 Apostle Peter was teaching us in verse 8 and 9 he says be sober first Peter 5 8 and 9 be sober, be vigilant, he says, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, he says, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Whom resist, it is within your power. Let me tell you this, 
no matter what you know as far as spiritual information is concerned if you do not understand satan and the dark world the demonic kingdom you will be incapacitated in ways you cannot imagine are we together now yes when i was discussing this i taught you that as an expert when they teach you about accidents the goal is not for you to go and die in a car crash but you can never be called a professional there is a whole course on plane crashes when you study aviation and you are being trained to become a professional pilot they simulate many kinds of plane crashes and they teach you how to circumvent them it is on account of that you are certified as a professional pilot are we together there are many believers in an attempt to remain positive have ignored the reality of the dark world jesus himself it revealed many aspects of satan it was jesus in fact our understanding about the operation of jesus as far as the gospel uh, operation of satan as far as the gospel is concerned was revealed by jesus himself and then Paul came and structured the satanic kingdom. And he said, do not be unaware of the wiles or the devices of the devil. Do not be ignorant, he says. So you must know God. You must know yourself in light of who Christ is. You must know your place in destiny and God's prophetic program. You must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. You must understand man and the cosmos and then you must understand your adversary the devil show me any believer who would have invested a major portion of his work exploring these dimensions of knowledge i show you one who it will be impossible to be a weak believer hallelujah strength in the kingdom is a cumulative of your knowledge the light that has come from these various dimensions of knowledge hallelujah and then I also taught you that there are four channels to knowing God. This is very important. I hope I'm still with you. Well, we're still together. Four channels to knowing God. That everybody who now wants to know God, there are four channels. Number one is scripture. The first recommendation as far as the knowledge of God is concerned is scripture. Our first port of call as believers who seek to know God and to know Jesus is scripture. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in um, John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with God. 3 says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made so the word is god and scripture is very important hallelujah this is very very important scripture reveals the character of god and scripture reveals the methodologies of god number two very quickly the second channel for learning and knowing god is a careful study on his names remember that the names of God capture various dimensions of his power and his might. The names of God, Exodus chapter 3, 13 to 15. Exodus 3, 13 to 15. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? 14 now. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. He said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am hath sent me to you. 15 now. He says, And God said, Listen, Moreover to Moses, Thus shall thou say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob had sent me to you. He says, This is my name forever and this is my memorial unto all generations. Now go to chapter 6. Same Exodus chapter 6 from verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, We are reading to verse 3. Don't be tired of writing scripture. Thou shalt, it says, now shalt thou see 
what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. Verse 2, And God spake unto Moses, saying, I am the Lord. Verse 3, And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. It says, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So God reveals himself according to his names. In fact, the various names of God that we know from scripture, as you have been taught, were trapped. They were experiences, manifestations of the power, the wisdom, the grace of God. Every time they saw God move in a dimension that was foreign to them, they would trap it in a name and build a memorial around it. So that every time you wanted to learn that dimension of God, you are referred to that name. That's how we came about with Jaira, Sikenu, are we together now? And all of these versions of his name. So four channels to knowing God. Number one, scripture. Number two, the names of God. Number three, Jesus Christ. This is powerful. Jesus Christ himself came as an explanation of God. I told you that Jesus came among the many reasons why he came up to the earth was as a manuscript and a marking script. He came as a correction to our understanding about God. Are we together? that the prior knowledge that the prophets and the patriarchs had had about God because until Jesus came no one could know God accurately until Jesus came there were gaps in their understanding of God why because they had to depend on the perception of any prophet who was in charge at that time to reveal God to them the possibility of a personal experience with God as we know widespread was not given to them as a privilege there were few people who either by the election of grace or just by by reason of certain covenants had the privilege of encountering God but as a nation and as a people even though God's people they had to interpret they had to depend on the interpretation of God that was given to them by the prophets and the prophets did their best but they made a lot of mistakes there were many things they credited to God that God had no hand in are we together and I hope you know when you study scripture you will see that even among the prophetic in the Old Testament there was a doubling between authentic work with God and there were times they delved into divination there were times where so there were many perspectives that they brought together and in ancient times anything that was beyond the realm of science and this three-dimensional realm they largely credited it to God so Jesus came as an explanation he came as a correction of our perception about God that means using the lens of the person Jesus we can judge every other prophet and every other person who has said anything about God whatever they said about God we bring it to the lens of Jesus as the incarnate now are we together and then we test what they said God was as against what Jesus came to manifest. And anything that we find in defiance or in contrast to what Jesus was revealing, then we knew that something had to be corrected about their understanding of God. It's the reason why they got angry every time Jesus called himself God or the Son of God. They said, you are a young boy who was born in our presence here. How would you dare say that you are God? They were angry especially the scribes and the Pharisees he said before your Abraham your father Abraham I was and they wanted to stone him they said this guy's blasphemy has gotten too much let's just kill him before he teaches this nonsense across the city they were uncomfortable but you see the truth is that Jesus came as a revelation of the father you find all that captured in John's synoptic account chapter 1 from verse 1 to 6 the Bible says the word became flesh and then it dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so he was the word incarnate he walked upon the earth Hebrews chapter 1 God who in sundry times and diverse manner spake to us in time past through the prophets hath in these last days verse 2 spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed heir of all things 
by whom also he had made the world, verse 3 now, the Bible says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So Jesus came as the express image of the Father. That means if you had never seen the Father, you had never related with the Father, if you looked at Jesus, he came as an explanation, an accurate explanation of the Father. Why do we know that Jesus represented the Father properly? Because the Father himself gave a public word of commendation. He said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, and he mandated creation to hear him. Are we together? So we learn God as we study Jesus. Finally, the fourth channel for learning and knowing God is through experience. There is a place for experience. Job 42 and verse 5. It was Job who taught us this through his pain. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. It says, but now my eye see at thee. You can know God through experience. First John chapter 1 from verse 1 we're reading to 5 hallelujah praise the name of the lord i'm giving you a lot of scripture write it in jesus name and your sound doctrine in jesus matchless name we have prayed john 1 well, let's do 1 to 5 you won't believe that i've not even started my teaching this night but this is important <laughs> write it down that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Are we together? Which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Verse 2. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. These were eyewitnesses and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest unto us. Verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ two more verses and these things write we unto you that your joy might be full the last verse now this then is the message he says which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him there is no darkness apostle john is saying listen we were eyewitnesses we walked with jesus we sat with him he taught us we were direct products of his mentorship and so when we teach you you must be able to believe believe that we're not just teaching you cunningly devised fables you can know god through experience hallelujah <laughs> are we still together let's pray in the spirit for one minute jesus Sila kapo sabranda kabalakosiata. Thank you for understanding. Hallelujah. Acts chapter seventeen. Something happened in Athens. Acts chapter seventeen. Let's begin our reading from verse sixteen to seventeen. Then we'll jump to twenty-two to twenty-four. Now watch this. The Bible says, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. This was Paul the apostle. He entered into Athens and he saw that the people were given to idolatry. Verse 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met him he kept arguing and saying listen something is wrong you people are zealous people but this is idolatry jump to verse 22 the bible says then paul stood in the midst of the mars hill and said ye men of athens i perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious verse 3 23 now for as I pass by, he says, and beheld your devotions. So these were a people who were zealous and committed. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Whom ye therefore ignorantly worship. This ignorance, your devotion 
worshiping an unknown God he says I have come to give you clarity about that God because when I came into Athens I saw a lot of religiosity he said you are even too superstitious use your the mind of your imagination to imagine a city everywhere you went there were monuments there were traditional practices everybody was suggesting anything and they had to build an altar they said we know this much whoever this god is and they put in an inscription there we don't know you but we'll keep worshiping you what a tragedy to the unknown god how do you become so devoted to an unknown god worshiping an unknown god how do you know he has answered you how do you know you are not in error who corrects who and by what standard keep that scripture there please I want you to look at that scripture very carefully as I pass by you know what that meant Paul I like Paul Paul just kept going around Athens from one region to the other and he said everybody was bowing down worshiping others had a set of knowledge there were ideas people were mentoring others and yet there was widespread ignorance in Athens and Paul said you even built an altar and you openly wrote an inscription on it to the unknown God in other words we are so devoted we love this God and we wish we could know him but since he has chosen not to reveal himself to us our devotion continues even in ignorance does that sound like a generation does that sound like an individual if a whole territory can worship an unknown God there are many people today who have died to an unknown God there are many people today who have argued about an un unknown God. There are many people today, respectfully speaking, preaching about an unknown God, advocating, doing, an evan doing evangelism to an unknown God, bringing seeds, tithing, giving to an unknown God. And Paul said, I have come to declare him to you. Let's look at verse 24. It says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. And when you begin to read, he started explaining to them. Now he was bringing perspective to this unknown God. Please look up. Do you know, ladies and gentlemen, that what happened in Athens is still true in many, many lives today? There are many people who have written songs to an unknown God. received all kinds of pain to an unknown God serving in a church that they believe is owned by an unknown God writing books dedicated to an unknown God this is from a standpoint of love I hope you understand me the goal is to give us perspective is it not amazing the zeal of the average Christian in Africa Africa is about one of the most religious continents passionate people I mean you is it spiritual exercises of widespread fasting is it spiritual exercise of honor to spiritual authorities I mean you find the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in many regards in Africa you find it down Middle East there is devotion in a way if you've had the privilege of traveling across the globe even whether it is in your mind or physically it will still achieve the same result are we together and you see the kind of devotion there are priests across the globe in the Christendom in every other religious expression you will see the sacrifices consecrations fastings abstinence devotion and you are wondering this widespread devotion there are parents who have quarreled their children behave well God is not happy with you the question is which God How about we servants of the Lord Jesus Christ? We have taught series and series about God. We have spoken about heaven. We have cried on crusade grounds, beckoning on thousands, praying for millions to come to this God. And they respond faithfully. Then they walk up to us. And then we lead them. We say, say after me, God or their Lord Jesus. And at the end of it, respectfully speaking, largely both the preacher and the new convert are not even aware of who they are talking to <laughs> hallelujah
No wonder there is usually a problem of conviction in light of situations, in light of, you know, negative situations especially. So you find out that there is a vacillation of convictions. Today we stand strong. I know God will heal me. I know it shall end up in praise. And then eventually our convictions begin to dwindle because in truth we are not sure. We made boastful statements but now we are not sure again. You see it's already happening to so many people. On one hand we say no this God if it is my God I know him. I know he will come through for this family. I know he can't leave me down. And then eventually, we begin to negotiate so many things and say, I, I don't even know again. God, is it your will? There are many people angry with God today because they were taught to believe in an unknown God. And they believed in that unknown God and many things that they believed he would do were not done. And in anger now, there are many, many people who do not even want the mention of church, do not want the mention of anything. They say, God has failed me. I have a plethora of failure. There's too much failure in my life. What kind of a God is this? I read in the Bible that he's almighty. I read in the Bible that he's all powerful. I read in the Bible that the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him. And here am I serving God, loving him in church. And then it looks like he does not want to attend to me. Do you know, respectfully speaking, sometimes people send me text messages and I know they are doing it sincerely. They say, Apostle, since God has not had me, this is my prayer request. Help me and tell him that we need. Yes, sir. And now you don't laugh at them. At least I admit my ignorance that I don't know him. You who claims to know him, please help me. The most important thing is his ears. Not who is talking. Let him just be aware that there are needs in my life like this. As simple as this message is, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm about to share with you will bring you liberation. There is something, if you do not know God in truth, your life and your Christian experience will be full of assumption and gaps. You will keep being promoted ministerially until the day you hit a wall and all those who are following you will ask, which God exactly are we worshiping? And then I hope you know, last I checked, I hope my facts are still right. There are about 4,000 religions and growing. And many of them are becoming similar now because they are pseudo expressions of one another. So how do I know I am not in error? How do I know the God I'm serving is the God of the Bible? There are all kinds of arguments and debates about God. I like Paul. Paul is teaching us something today that he taught the believers in Athens. And so he gathered the people and said there is need for a conference immediately and he said ladies and gentlemen first let me commend your zeal i see that you are even so superstitious imagine that you went to athens and you said this god he wants you to give him money and everybody will come and say oh yeah god where are you another person will say god does not need your money he say god give me back my money i was told that you are too rich Another person says, God wants you to fast and pray. Another person says, God is not interested in fasting and prayer. Another person says, God demands consecration and devotion, respectfully. And then another one says, it doesn't matter. So believers are now confused because remember, all of this is to please this God. And for many, he still remains an unknown God. Someone says, if you want him to bless you with increase, do this. Another person says, just believe him and give thanks. And many believers are saying, God, can you come and help us clear the air? Who is right and who for God? We want to believe you sincerely, but who are you? No wonder Moses asked that question. He said, who will I go and tell Pharaoh now? I hope you know Moses was trained in Egypt. He was supposed to be the next Pharaoh. But he ran away. So he said, if I go and tell Pharaoh, God has sent me. Pharaoh said, dear preacher, I hope you know there are many gods in Egypt. Which of them now has sent you? And Moses said, before you send me, before I go and disgrace myself and cause pain to the people, please reveal yourself to me. Let my confidence be anchored upon the truth of the God I have met. And God said, I am that I am. Mm, I am that I am.
ladies and gentlemen every generation that had men and women who shook that generation especially spiritually their impact and their exploit was directly connected to their genuine encounters with God make reference to my teaching the value of spiritual encounters but it's important for you to understand this many people have not taken the time to know God we can know about God but the knowledge of God now just as an example if someone suddenly sent you a text now and says apostle is in US right now and is about to preach in a conference because you know me and you know that except otherwise every Sunday I am here something about me with respect to my assignment will make you it will not it will not even be a prayer point are we together now there is something about God when you know even the prophetic will not threaten you again because you can judge it from the lens of your knowledge of God there is something about God when you know fear dies immediately because there is something about God that if you do not understand he will look like a killer who can destroy you and then in another place he looks like he's indefinitely merciful and yet the Bible captures all these dimensions of him as a lion and as a lamb you still find it there as a warrior and as a merciful God you still find it there are we together there were people that God took things from and there were people God gave things to so which which God should I serve the songs we sing they all belong to you and even the air we breathe it all belongs to you after singing that beautiful rendition and then an intelligent person will say but please my dear brother can you help me describe or explain for me this god you have served for 20 years i'm listening Talk to me. What are you going to say about him? Oh, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. I can tell you this God is mighty. And he says, no, that's not what I'm asking you. Who is he? If it is true that he wants to be known, if it is true that he wants to be served, if it is true that he has sent me, how do you represent a God you do not know? Now you say he has called you light. He's called you salt. He's an ambassador. You sent you as an ambassador. You even claim that he has sent you to your family like he sent Moses to Egypt. So you stand before the altars that have plagued your family for years. The harpalist knows who he's serving. And he will tell you, I know him. We were introduced there. Now you have come and you want to dislodge his power. I don't argue. But who is this God? The prophets of Baal. They got to a point where they knew Baal so much and the Bible says they called upon Baal and they were surprised probably for the first time in their prophetic journey Baal disappointed them Baal we do not we didn't expect that you would disappoint us to a point that they lacerated themselves devotion to an unknown God and Elijah said call him louder you claim you know him let him come and defend his name and when it was time, Elijah said, now you watch the living God. He set up 12 stones. He said, pour water on it. This one is not experiment. There is something about God you must know. Pour water, fire is about to come. He said, add it again, seven times. And then he said, clear the way. And he lifted up his eyes. He did not pray twice. He did not pray three times. The Bible says fire came from heaven and licked up the water. Hallelujah. When David stood before Goliath, Goliath looked at him and said, Am I a dog, Israel? With all my might and experience, you bring this small boy? You want me to kill him in a way that will leave you with bad memories? And when he was done talking, I will show you the scripture later on. David looks at him and says, that is none of my business. You see, I did not come with a sword. You should be afraid already that I'm coming to fight you and I did not come with a sword. Can you imagine that you come to me with your bows and your spears, but there is something I know about God. I have come to you in a name. He never said I came with a sling. I came with a name that he has revealed. I know what he can do. I know what he can do. 
those who know God indeed they shall be strong truly they shall be strong that you can see death to the face and say I know who sent me believers please hear me our stability especially in the days that are coming will not just be based on your connection to a man of God it will be based on your connection to the God you know the God you know is the God you will serve your generation with and this this discussion tonight is to help you take away the haziness we have made a lot of bold statements God will not fail me and yet we are failing and so people say okay I was patient to listen to you for 12 years where is this God and you too now you have to go back and say God truly where are you oh You can know God accurately. Let's discuss this God now. The first thing I want you to know about God is that the Bible records that God is infinite. Please listen. God is infinite. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Please sit down. It says, there is no searching. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, notice now, the everlasting God, he calls him the Lord. Are we together? Three names at once. Everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He fainted not, neither is he weary. Then the Bible gives us a very profound information about God. That from the start of your journey, you should know that the best of your exploration will not do justice to who God is. He says there is no searching of his understanding. He leaves you with that disclaimer that no matter how you are diligent, there is only a small portion of God you will end up knowing relative to the vastness of his person. You will never arrive in that journey. He encourages you to go ahead with your exploration. But he leaves you already with a message not to discourage you that this journey, you will never arrive in it. There is no end to the searching of God. Are we together? Now, that does not mean you should not start, but he's only informing you that you, you will, as you sojourn in learning and knowing God, you will come to the conclusion that there is no searching of his understanding. The second thing about God you need to know is that there are three qualities of God that stand him out above all men. The singular difference between God and man is not just that he's creator and man is the creature. No. That God is omnipresent. I have taught you. Omnipotent and omniscient. These are the three attributes of God he did not share with man. So when the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature, I hope you know that our partaking of his divine nature is not absolute, is shared. It is not every part of his divine nature we are brought into. No. There is a dimension of God that no man has tasted. His omnipresence, his omnipotence, and his omniscience to be omnipresent means to be everywhere at the same time there is no man in recorded history not from scripture and not from history who has been given the privilege of enjoying omnipresence where can i hide from your presence even if i go to hades the place of the dead the psalmist says still you are there the closest person who perhaps would have qualified to experience it was the psalmist but even him was not granted that access. He was only shown the things that would come prophetically. And yet that was in types and shadows. God is omnipresent, meaning all places at the same time. God does not have to move to see. He has the all-seeing eye. Right from where he sits, there is nothing. The Bible says even the hair on our head. You, the owner of the head, how many hair is on your head? And yet the Bible says that eyes he can see he knows when one hair fall is he that idol that he can count the hair even if it was one person as a project you will still fail i'm explaining certain things for you about god his omnipresence the ability to be everywhere at the same time number two god is omni 
potent. The word potent means all powerful. Man is not all powerful. Our dominion, authority, and power is derived. It is always in partnership with the Holy Spirit, in isolation to the Holy Spirit, or in isolation to principles. We do not have power. The power that man wields, whether scientifically or supernaturally, is always derived. Please understand this. So man is not omnipotent. This is the reason why it is possible to pray for 100 people who are sick. And sincerely, even if you find 80%, there might be one person. You see that now? Yes. There is a level of accuracy as far as the dispensing of power that no man has had yet attained unto. The Bible tells us there is even a dimension of power reserved for an age that is not our own. He it says it's called the power of the age to come. But that through diligence and alignment, men can taste of that power even within this age. I'm sure that those are the dimensions that will be imported to sponsor the end time revival. The power of the age to come. Are we together? God is omni potent and then God is omniscient it was Apostle Paul who was mentoring the church in Corinth and he brought them into this understanding that we see in part and we prophesy in part can you imagine that that means the best of our revelatory grace the best of whatever it is that we have is still a part and a portion this is profound we know in part and we prophesy in part like I taught you when we're discussing, can you imagine that I am now in this place, there are several overflows to the basement and perhaps outside and the many who are connecting from across the globe. Can you imagine that if I am to interpret the crowd of people here, I can only walk based on what my eye has seen. Do you know why you do not have eyes all over you? To remind you that you are finite finite in sight finite in vision you would think god would have put an eye like a crown all around you so that you don't have to turn to the back but even at that you will still be limited next time you are looking for the difference between man and god even if you do not know him know this for a fact that there are things he did not share with man it is what makes him exclusive god by himself he is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, he is omniscient. You don't need to mentor God. There is no book in heaven where God reads to get more knowledge. No, all that are documented in heaven is for the saints. Are we together now? Yes. Who will mentor him? Have you ever seen him in a lecture room? Jesus only received knowledge and lecture when he became a man. Because he came as a pattern man to help men ascend to the heights of God. But as God, God does not know. His knowledge is not progressive. It is absolute. All things come from him. It is in his light that we see light. So what you call past, present, and future is only a reality that was framed to help you relate with God. The truth is that that reality does not exist with God. God does not even dwell in the realm of eternity because eternity is still a function of time. It's just a summation of time without end. God lives beyond eternity. His realm is now. Hallelujah. All things are present before him. So what you call future and what you call yesterday, yesterday only left you. In God's mind, yesterday and tomorrow, his hands can reach into them. There is no difference. Technology has helped you to understand how God relates. You can rewind a movie. There's something called rewind. Is that true? There's something called fast forward. These are all agencies to help you manipulate time. So if you saw something and it skipped you, you can enjoy it and rewind it as many times. Unfortunately, that only happens with a movie, not your life. When it passes, it's gone. Only the God of heaven can reach back into time. Hallelujah. I wrote here and I want you to write, please. For our profiting and dominion here on earth, there are three aspects of God we must focus on. Having established the fact that there is no searching of his understanding, having established the fact that learning God and knowing God is an eternal pursuit, that even in heaven, 
there are series of lectures through all the ages that will keep helping us to know God. Where there is no darkness, where there is no evil, where Satan and all demon spirits have been dealt with, a new age has come. The activity in heaven will not only be worshipping God, we will still be learning God. Knowledge for the believer remains. Are we together? It will never come to an end. There will never be anything like perfection of knowledge of God. We will have perfect knowledge of all things as far as the world God created, but not his person. As far as his person is concerned, we will learn him through all the ages. What kind of a God is that? There is no searching of his understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are learning tonight was a personal conclusion of my own journey. I got to a point where I was not satisfied with my knowledge of God. I was tired about talking about a God whose di certain dimensions I had not seen. And many people asked me several questions and said, Apostle, how come I want to know God, but I don't know what to do? For someone, you say, okay, go and fast, you will know God. And I fasted and I still do not know God. I want to know God. Another person says, read your Bible. He says, no, I understand all this. I, I want to know him. I want to be confident. And then the Holy Spirit began to lead me through a journey that arrived at this message tonight. That as far as the profiting of the believer is concerned on earth, the interest of God, as far as knowing him, is only captured in three dimensions if you press to know these three things sufficient is that pursuit of God within the frame of this lifetime can I give them to you number one the first aspect of God that God desires all saints to know is his character please write when God mandates that we know him the first thing he demands that we know and understand about him is his character please write it down i'm taking away the confusion about knowing god every time the bible demands that the saints know god every time your hunger in the spirit presses that you know god i'm taking away the confusion the first thing you should press to know is his character exodus chapter 33 18 and 19 his character moses said and i beseech thee Show me your glory. Moses is crying now for the glory of God. 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness. Please say all my goodness. What kind of description is that? That means the goodness of God as an aspect of his character is even dimensional. So when you claim you have seen the goodness of God, it's only an aspect of his goodness. I will make all my goodness to pass before thee. What did Moses ask for? His glory. The glory of God is all that makes God, God. And he says, no, Moses, I discern your heart. I know what your heart seeks to understand. I will let all my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Genesis to Deuteronomy came from this encounter. Just an aspect of God's goodness being revealed was what Moses saw. And from that encounter, five books came out. Moses was not there from the beginning. He was not there all through the time of, you know, all through scripture, Abraham and the rest. He was not there. Yet look at the accuracy of his writing simply because a dimension of his goodness passed before him. Isaiah chapter 40, we read 28 already. Let's do to 30. Is God helping someone? So when you know God, you desire to know God, the first thing you should pursue is the knowledge of his character. Verse 28 now. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding, the Bible says, 29. He giveth power, whoever that he is, giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength read 30 with me even the youth shall faint and be weary are we together and then he says that uh, young men shall utterly fall 
the young men shall utterly fall. Look at what God does. He gives power to the faint. To them who have no might, he increases strength. These are all expressions of his character. We are piecing together the various manifestations of his character. And with the imagination of an artist, we are drawing a personality using his character. Are we together now? As an artist, work with me. If I tell you, draw a man for me, give me a pictorial image of a man who is kind, loving, probably holding his children. Now I'm helping your mind to be creative. Are we together now? As an artist, immediately you can use a man's character as the tools to paint a picture of him. That even though you have never seen him, I can describe for you a man and using the character of that man, you can go into an office and start looking and you say, this most likely is a man. Based on what you said, the man always likes to wear a white suit. It is usual for him to wear a white suit. Most likely, if he sees you, he will greet you and say, have you eaten? I have fed you with the knowledge of that man's character. When you step into that office, you are looking at everybody who behaves like that. And when you suddenly find a man coming with a white suit and says, young man, have you eaten? You can with confidence say, good afternoon, Mr. James. And he says, afternoon, how are you? How did you know the knowledge of his character? Are you learning now? The character of God is very profound. In Psalms 145, Let's go to verse 8. Please walk with me. The Holy Spirit is teaching us something now. The Lord is gracious. I'm showing you a concise display. You see why this psalmist guy was very powerful. I don't know what business he did with God. But this guy explored God. He, he it was him. The Psalms gives us about the rich capture of the entire character of God. You really want to understand the character of God. In fact, even more than the Pauline epistles. The psalmist, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger. You are describing God now and of great mercy. Start working with your imagination. This is the God you are called to serve. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all. Wow. And his tender mercies are over all his works. There is a dimension of God's compassion that everything he created must experience. No wonder even Satan has a length of time before his destruction. This is consistent with how God works. Meaning it is not usual for God to just judge and destroy people because he's angry. God always allows time for repentance. If you know this about God, certain dimensions of fear dies immediately. Verse 10. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and the saints shall bless thee. Please be patient. Let's read. 11 now, media, let's work together. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of your power. Verse 12, to make known to the sons of men his mighty act and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Uh -huh. It says thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endured throughout all generations. 14, the Lord upholded all that fall and raised up those that be bowed down. He's painting the character of God. The unknown God is now beginning to find form in your mind. The unknown God is, a, is beginning to be described so that he's no longer, you are not building an altar devotion and worship to an unknown God. Every time you say, Father, your mind, your spirit is connecting to somebody. A, a, you have used his attributes to paint a picture that your mind can relate with. Let's finish that scripture. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfyest the desire of every living thing. 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that call upon him. This alone gives you confidence in prayer that it is inconsistent with his character to be far from you while you pray. That every time he hears prayer coming from a sincere believer, he is nigh them that call upon him and then to them that call upon him in truth. So if you are calling upon him and it looks like he's not hearing, verify truth in what you are doing. 
he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him and also will hear their cry and will save them. The last verse, the Bible says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him, and all the wicked will he destroy. That means there is gain in loving God. The Bible says preservation is an advantage that is given those who love God. Hallelujah. Say his character. You want to know God accurately? The first part of call is to seek to know his character to seek to know his character right for reference we're not reading but psalm 103 from verse 1 to 22 but allow me read 1 to 5 with you psalms 103 1 to 5 hallelujah we sing it as a beautiful hymn unfortunately still to an unknown god bless the lord he says all my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits say benefits that means god never calls the seed of jacob to seek him in vain every time you keep seeking god know that you are seeking him number one because you love him but that he's benevolent enough to leave benefits and there are five of them number one the bible says verse three now who forgiveth all thine iniquities. That is the first benefit. Number two, who healeth all thy diseases. Number three, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Number four, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. On oh, some growth. Ah, I can come boldly. I know that he heals. So when Jesus showed up, when he saw sick people, to prove that God loves to heal, to prove that God loves to forgive. He says, your sins are taken away from you. And the people did not understand what he was doing. It was more than just speaking to the man. He was validating the character of God. If Jesus never made that statement, we would doubt God's ability to forgive. Because it must be captured in the life of Jesus if it is true. He forgives. He heals. He delivers. He crowns you with loving kindness and with glory, tender mercies. And verse 5, the Bible says he satisfies your mouth with good things. I don't know about you, but ladies and gentlemen, my Christian life changed when I truly understood the character of God. I took out time to study. Are we together? I can teach you about a God that I know and your entire theology, your praise, your worship, your attitude will reflect the description of God that you have been taught. Are we together now? There are songs that when I sing, I believe what I'm saying because I have an idea by the Spirit, quickened by the Holy Spirit. I know the kind of God that I'm speaking to. Hallelujah. I've told you this. I know that God loves me. I don't know what he did to me, but I have been so indoctrinated by the love of God for me. If I hear a voice here and he says, I love you, I will reply him and say, thank you. I know he was speaking to me. Even if it's not my name that is called. Are you that confident about the love of God? No wonder the apostle said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let that consciousness remain with you. Dear preacher, let me tell you, when you understand the character of God, there is no limit to what you can do. He, Jesus, representing God, said, I will never leave you. Is that true? He says that a comforter will come. I know that I am never alone. The character of God has given me confidence. When men say there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up. God loves me. God loves me. I am not only a child of God, I am evolving in experience to becoming a friend of God. And most people have no idea that being a friend of God is a noble status. Not many people in scripture were ever called a friend of God because there is a friend that even sticks closer than a brother. Do you know what it means to be a friend of God? That means God takes away the restraint as far as showing you the mysteries and the secrets that are concerning your life and any territory. When you become a friend of God, it becomes impossible for God to visit a territory and not consult with you not because you are going to give him permission shall i hide this from my friend abraham 
I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Hallelujah. If you have a vision about me today and you see me dying, and you say, Apostle, I saw an obituary, I saw you dying. It's not whether you are fake or real. No matter how real you are, I will love you and congratulate you and hug you and say, thank you for showing me this. But there is something I know about God. Hezekiah knew this about God. And even when a genuine prophet came and said, put your house in order, I'm sorry to tell you, you will not recover. He was only a messenger. The Bible never calls Isaiah a liar. Isaiah was a prophet with integrity. But Hezekiah said, I've listened to you. Go. And he turned his face to the wall. He says, God, remember, there is something I know about your character. Let me tell you this. Fear will give you heart attack and kill you for nothing, except you know the character of God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for thou. Hold on. Hold on. Who is the thou? Omnipotent. Omniscient. Thou art with me. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I expect favor every day of my life. That is not the basis of my walking with God. But I know that there is no genuine love without giving. And since his love is eternal, his favor and his benefits must be eternal. They go hand in glove. This, I'm sharing with you my orientation about God. Hallelujah. There are many of us who are still worshiping an unknown God. And while God has positioned us as men of God to help give perspective to your knowledge about God, nothing will truly give you confidence until you are guided to know the character of God. There are men that if they tell you anything about them, the first thing you will be glad to say sorry later, but you will say, I know this person. Forget it. You are just talking nonsense. Hallelujah. Ah, this man collected a bribe of 5,000. This man that I know, well, we are all human, but until proven otherwise, I know this director, he will not bribe. Do you know God enough to stand and, and tell the dream that you saw that in that dream you saw everybody going down and a spirit appears and tells you God said. You say, uh, 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 hold on. Which God? If it's another God, that's fine. But to me, my altar is not to an unknown God. My altar is to a loving God, a compassionate and merciful God. And he can arise as a warrior. So when the devil comes to threaten you like, like, like the, the patriarchs of old, you can arise. The fullness of my days I will fulfill. I lay me down and I slept for this same God sustained me. Hallelujah. He upholds all things, including the gates of the grave, by the word of his power. Hmm. For I am a man under authority, the centurion said. I know the integrity of the Roman government. And on the strength of my consciousness of their power and their integrity, I can say to one, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. Jesus, I know you. You are a man under authority. And Jesus said, I've not found this kind of faith, this orientation. No, not in Israel. Can I tell you, I used to live a life full of fear and uncertainties, but something about the character of God gave me stability. Apostle, what gives you hope that Koinonia will remain serving the purposes of God and rising? If I tell you because I'm anointed, I gave you a foolish answer. That is too small an answer to sponsor longevity in a world that you do not know. I don't know the future, but there is something I know about God. Alpha, Omega. God, when he starts a thing, he's able to finish. Number two, there is something I know about God as revealed by the apostles. He says, listen carefully. He says that I, how did he put it now? I'm persuaded. Huh? Help me with that scripture now. My mind is trying to get the scripture. Yes. That he's able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day do you know yes thank you 
I know whom I have believed. That's what the scripture I was looking for. And I am persuaded. It says, faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. So when we start our building project, no matter the millions of dollars, faithful is he that calleth who will do it. You will watch with shock and with wonder as the faithful man arises. Why do I know that every day you will keep coming to be blessed as much as, you know, this platform remains? Do you know why? Because everything God gives endures. Ladies and gentlemen, are you building your life on sand or are you building it on a rock? I know that I am an eternal blessing. Why do I know that? Because God is not a man that he should lie. And when he called Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, 2 and 3, he said, I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth you. And then he says, thou shalt be a blessing. And he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Galatians 3, 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Everything he told Abraham routed to Christ. Christ is my reality today so I am a blessing I cannot be a curse any nation and any place he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord every time I step into a nation I step in with a spiritual shout of Hosanna It's always a triumphant entry because it is blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord your spiritual life will change when you understand this hallelujah my life changed when I understood the character of God. Another revelation about God, that he's a lifter of men. Ah, yeah. If you ever doubt him, look at the person speaking to you. How dare you say God does not lift? God is the lifter of men. Like he's lifting you now. I said like he's lifting you now. It doesn't matter who believes it or who does not believe it. That is none of your business. Like he's lifting you now. Ah. By your spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive To declare your something about the lifter that I know my family may be the lowest but I know something about God I am not serving an unknown God my altar my devotion is not to an unknown God he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him hallelujah hear me when naysayers come to you and say you've been serving God for 20 years what is the benefit God rewards, he does not pay salary. It's salary that is monthly. God's reward may look like it's not coming, but in one day, after 20 years, even if you are Abraham, it may take 25 years, but ladies and gentlemen, when the rewarder comes, he will come with his reward and his benefits and make your life a praise to the nations. Hallelujah. For many years we served God and gave him everything and there was no comeliness and nothing in our lives that looked like God rewards but something about his character. For someone you have been praying and fasting and pressing in life and ministry because God said he's giving you the mantle and the mandate of a deliverer. Do not allow ignorant person confuse you about this God you are serving. The rewarder is on his way to you. Yours is to be diligent. Others were bribing in the office and you refused to bribe. Now you are feeling stupid because you would have lived in a duplex by now. You would have had cars if only you cut corner. I'm taking away the haziness from this God. He is not an unknown God. He can be known using the vista of his character. You can know God by knowing his character. 
it is true that God destroys but who does he destroy let me tell you three categories of people in the Bible that God destroys number one enemies and when God destroys enemies it's not just something that happens enemies there let me define for you who God's enemies are this is not my discussion but I want you to know <laughs> God's enemy is not just the person who fights you God's enemy is anybody who perpetually interrupts the manifestation of his will God's definition of an enemy is not based on sentiments or biases you can become God's enemy if you consistently become an interruption to his will if he loves you because he's your you're his child he may not judge you in terms of throwing you but you will be edged out of the position that creates that interruption by giving your bishopric to another this is how God works I taught you this already our last discussion are we together now yes so when you say arise and let your enemies be scattered make sure you are not part of them first that's why the Bible talks about righteousness who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord don't just pray blindly and be a victim of your prayer you see that there's a lot of prayerfulness but in ignorance many people pray and miss you think just because you hate a man God hates the man you can be saying no oh God kill that director for me now help me and kill this man and God is saying no even though he's not my son he's a Cyrus that I've ordained and for as long as this system works it is in honor to them that you will rise there are Cyruses who, although they are not in Christ, they have, through the sincerity of their heart, aligned strategically to God's program. He will not take them out. He will leave them there. Their relevance is too important. This is a mystery. In God's end time program, you will see many people who are not of the faith playing sensitive roles. Because the most important thing, listen, when he appeared unto Joshua, do you not read your Bible? He said, are you for us or against us? What was the answer? He said, neither. No, this is not how I walk. I am for anything that is pro my will. So he said, who is on the Lord's side? Get my message, who is on the Lord's side? You have to, before you invoke God's judgment, verify your position. Many believers have become casualties of careless prophetic speakings. Lord, destroy anybody that stops your program. Destroy anybody. And God is saying, I'm warning you. You don't know what you are doing. Verify. Before Moses invoked judgment, he said, who is on the Lord's side? Let me give you a chance. If you are for him. And Elijah said, if God be God this way, if Baal, God will always give an opportunity for the will of man to willfully reject him before judgment is meted upon people. Are we together now? We see his character in Nineveh again as, as idolatrous and as stiff-necked and stubborn as they are. He sent Jonah. He loved Jonah. But Jonah's life went down as a genuine prophet. You don't have to be fake to destroy. You just have to be out of the will of God. Many good people will be corruptors of God's program simply because they do not understand the power of alignment. This is not about being real or fake. This is about being, if you are Jonah, rejecting the call of God and running away, you are putting Nineveh at ransom. God wanted to met out judgment or otherwise because he sits on a throne that is made of righteousness and justice. I hope you know that the very throne God sits on is an altar. Are we together? And Jonah was delaying the manifestation. He needed to give them a chance to choose him or otherwise. And look what God, the dealing that God had to go through with Jonah. Jonah entered the belly of the fish, caused people to lose until he repented, realigned, and the same instruction again. And he went to Nineveh. Jonah's refusal was because of something about God he knew. He knew that God was merciful and he hoped that his delay would make God angry and punish because God does not forbear with iniquity indefinitely. So he was running as a strategy that the evil will continue to rise as an indignation and God will be angry and punish them. But God said, Jonah, go. And the moment Jonah spoke to them, the king said, everyone, beast and man declare fast and Jonah was angry go and read your Bible the entire discussion was the anger of Jonah he said I know you this is what I, this is a, this is why I ran because I knew that if they now repent with all this wickedness they have done you will still forgive them do you know that about God 
If you know that about God, you can still reach your unbelieving grandfather. After doing witchcraft for 35 years, you can still tell him before you pass on to glory, let me give you a chance to love Jesus. And he says, you don't know how many people have killed. He said, it does not matter. The moment you declare the Lordship of Jesus over your life, the Bible says there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Please be seated. The character of God. Is someone learning? Explore the character of God as a preacher, as a businessman, as a family man, and certain fears will die. Your confidence will be restored like that of uh, those who were in Bible days. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is largely powerless in conviction because there is something about the character of God we do not know. Number two, what is the second aspect of God we must explore? His ways. Please write. His ways. His ways. Psalm 25, 4 and 5. You want to know God? Second to the knowledge of his character. The second thing you need to understand is how he operates. His character talks about who he is. His ways talk about how he operates. The secret to discernment, in addition to the gift of discernment by the Spirit, is a thorough knowledge of the ways of God. When you know how God acts, you will know how he does not act. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day never forget this scripture psalm 25 4 and 5 it says show me your way teach me your path ladies and gentlemen when there is inaccuracy in your representation of god and his purposes it may be derived from an inaccurate understanding as to how god works now please look up there are things god will never do even as prophetic actions number one god will never manipulate the will of men the first thing god gave man watch this now when god created man as the zenith of his creation he said let them have dominion from that time make reference to my teaching the series let them have dominion it became scripturally incorrect for God to superimpose anything upon man. Even at the detriment of your eternal destiny, he still left you to choose. You can reject him. The Bible says, as many as received him, meaning not everybody will receive him. Can you imagine that? That God in his might, full of love, he's watching someone now go to hell. And he's saying, I give you an option. You can choose me that you will leave. When he set up the brazen serpent, remember in the days of Moses, he said the instruction was to look and leave. I cannot force it on you. When he met the people who needed healing, he asked them, how do you see a man who has been impotent, a man, a woman with the issue of blood and all kinds of people, and then asked them what they wanted. Let me tell you this, eternally, God has bound himself to respect the will of men. If you notice about the way God behaves, his modus operandi, as a leader, you will never force people and usurp upon their will. Whether it's in ministry or whatever it is, if I want to prophesy to you, you have a right as an act of your volition to say, I appreciate you, but I'm not ready to receive. And I must respect it if I know the ways of God. Hallelujah. Leadership is very poor in Africa and respectfully speaking in many, many circles of the church because there is something about the modus operandi of God that we do not know. And we have observed even here on this platform that one of the mistakes of the prophetic ministry is that many, aside from the absence and the bankruptcy of consecration, one of the mistakes of the prophetic ministry is that men and women have not subjected themselves to understand the ways of God. And the prophetic by design is very complicated. It is your knowledge of the ways of God that helps to define the coordinates of your seeing and your hearing. So that even as a prophet, you know what to reject and what to receive. 
Are we together? Just because you are open to the realm of the spirit does not afford you the opportunity to fish to your life and to others everything you see and hear. The realm of the spirit is a vast realm. It must be sieved from the lens of the, not just the character of God, but the way God operates. Hallelujah. So if for instance, I see a revelation right now that somebody here, the spirit of death is coming, you see. That may be an accurate revelation, but just announcing to you that you are going to die, I have not edified you because the, the major purpose of the prophetic for exhortation, are we together for comfort, I, I, that, that purpose has been defeated in what I'm saying. I leave you with fear, I leave you with doubt, I have not helped you. And because we have been called corporately as believers to the ministry of reconciliation, the Bible says it is not God's desire that even the wicked should perish, but that everyone would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. That must inform my administration of the prophetic. So having declared to you what I see that the devil wants to do, I must now use scripture and show you a recommended path of obedience that leads to your victory. Hallelujah. Are we together? The ways of God. The ways of God. One of the rules of thumb that you must never forget about God is that God encourages people. He challenges people. He can provoke you, but he will never usurp and manipulate your will. That means as a husband, you are manipulating the will of your wife and your children. You are not behaving like God. You are manipulating the wheels of people in society. You are not behaving like God. People must be given the room under sufficient knowledge to make their choices. There are 2.6 billion professing Christians in the world as we know statistically today. And you can imagine that as mighty as God is, he did not just wave his hand to say everybody by the end of September, you must be saved. I am God. No. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Listen, let me say this respectfully speaking, you see. And I say this generally to the body of Christ, but with a bias to men and women of God, let's trust God for grace to walk in integrity, especially as to things like challenging God's people to sow and to give. I believe in giving. I believe in challenging God's people to give. That is the way God designed for resources to come into the house of God. But anything that carries the extra luggage of manipulation and lies, and falsehood and false prophecy and deceit number one god's people are not stupid the more they stay in the presence of god they receive wisdom they know when truth comes or otherwise one of the things i've learned especially in leadership is love people and serve them sincerely and truthfully and when the moment comes when you need their help and cooperation in any way tell them sincerely and watch what they will do they will surprise you beyond your imagination Hallelujah. So for people who may be practitioners of this error, God is calling us. And when I say things like this, you see me say us. Because that body consciousness is what we seek to, to contribute to the body of Christ. Pointing fingers does not provide any profiting. The most important thing is a holistic growth of the body through knowledge. Hallelujah. But it, it matters when you know how God operates, you will know how he does not operate. Hallelujah. Yes. Rather than embarrassing somebody, the Bible says to rebuke not an elder in public. That is how God works. So if a man of influence, a man who saying anything about him will cause a serious problem to his family and maybe to a church or to whatever it is, a man of influence, I will not come and prophesy doom to the person. I would rather say, do you know what? See me in the office or see me later on and then you can discuss that. Just because you saw it, it is intelligence of the ways of God that guides how you dispense it. 
So you see that these are mistakes that sometimes we make. In the name of being bold, we say certain things that end up destroying people because you are talking to a CEO whose employees are there. You are talking to a governmental official. You are talking to kings and to nobles. It is the mistake that many have made and they have lost strategic people in their lives because of the bankruptcy of discernment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We must be very wise. Knowing the ways of God helps you to balance how to function. We function in the kingdom based on the knowledge of the ways of God. Jesus spent time, everything he said about the Beatitudes was helping the believers understand how the kingdom works. Are we together now? Yes. He said, this is what your law says, but this is what I now say. He gave them room to ask him questions, questions, Q and A, and he explained certain things to them. They asked him questions on money, on family and marriage, on children, on these, you know, demons. They asked him questions and he answered. All that he was attempting to do was to help bring them to a point where they know the ways of God. Are we together? On the day of Pentecost, when they saw the disciples, they said, these guys are drunk with me. Said, uh, uh, Peter said, Abba, you are seeing us filled with the Holy Spirit about to declare good news and you are saying we are drunk with wine. But this is that. And then he began his discussion. I'm praying for somebody here that in the name of Jesus, your life will begin to be so accurate because you will function within the confines of the ways of God. If you are a businessman, you are a preacher, you are, you are an, a leader of any sort, once you have subscribed to the government of heaven, you must limit your operations to be consistent with the ways of God. We must edit our principles and practices. Are we together now? To ensure and insist that we are always within the boundary of that which is consistent with how God acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is a concise and sufficient compendium of the earth work of Jesus. It was not just one verse, one chapter. Different scenarios and you would see the way Jesus responded. That should be a lesson to us. When you are becoming a believer in experience, a mature believer, would I say, you need to understand that you must constrain yourself to live by the modus operandi of the kingdom. It is inconsistent with the way God works that when you see somebody in need, especially if it's something that does not cost you anything to help and provide that need, and you ignore it. The Bible says, uh, how does he put it now? It says, do not withhold that which is good when it is within your power. A small child is crying and 50 naira can solve the child's problem. But then you shout and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a prayer giant, and you pass the person. He gave the story of the good Samaritan as a lesson. There were three people, the priest, the Levite. They were focused on religiosity and spiritual, spirituality and they ignored the man dying. And then there was a Samaritan. You see that now. Remember that the Samaritan and the Jews, they had nothing in common. They were always at points of conflict. But now he saw this man who was beaten and left for dead. The Bible says he embalmed the person, treated the person, took him to a hotel and kept him there and told the man, please take care of him if there are any extra bills on my return. And Jesus said, among all of them, paraphrasing, who demonstrated God-likeness. True spirituality is beyond just prayer and fasting. It must be demonstrated in our ability to give. The character of love, which is the foundation of the Christian faith, is unforgiving. You are not called to solve everybody's problem. So let me balance it so that careless people don't ride on this message and become a burden to people. There are people who will like what I've said now and say, Uncle, you see, Apostle has said you must pay my school fees, pay my house rent while you are crossing your hand and being irresponsible. No. As much as God is love, God does not endorse irresponsibility. Say amen. Hallelujah. Because you know, the Bible said, be careful how you hear. There are people who hear all kinds of things. While a preacher is shouting and laboring that you receive truth. They just hear the parts that relates to their lust. And they now go around harassing people and saying, you claim to be a Christian. You have the money to just buy a house for me. Hallelujah. The word is enough for the wise. So his character, his ways. Let me give you the last one and then we'll pray. To the unknown God. You want to demystify the unknown God? 
as far as our walk in the earth is concerned the last dimension of him that you must press is the knowledge of his power the knowledge of his character helping you to understand who he is the knowledge of his ways helping you to know how to function in the kingdom within the limit and the boundary of his will now the knowledge of his power please listen to this one because here is where the administration of your authority and your power the zenith of your dominion is at the mercy of this knowledge the knowledge of his power Psalm 63 and verse 2 verse 1 says oh lord give us verse 1 let's do one and two. Oh god thou art my god early will i seek thee so he's seeking god my soul thirsted for thee my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is why verse 2 to see thy power not just to see your face not just to know your ways but now to see your power God's power can be seen and thy glory so I have seen thee in the sanctuary you can know his power Matthew 22 and verse 29 here's what Jesus said ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God what is the word air you will walk in error you will walk in confusion you will walk in defiance and in deviation to God's preset pattern when you do not know his ways like I taught earlier and you do not know his power that means the power of God can keep a man in the will of God in fact the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things in alignment with the will of God I have taught you here that outside of the will of God the power of God has no assignment the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God the power of God only stops working when triggered by faith it only stops working when that issue that matter or that person has come into perfect alignment with the will of God so when you see a sick person and you release the healing power the healing anointing what is the assignment of the healing power the healing power does not it doesn't just come there to heal the person it scans that man's life and sees what aspect of his health is inconsistent with the will of God and like a drug in your body it begins to correct depending on the dimension and the gravity of the power released it can bring you into perfect alignment do you understand what I'm sharing with you? You want to know God? You have not truly known God as far as it is given to us if you do not know his power. Ephesians 1, 18. Hmm. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. This Paul was a powerful man. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Watch all the things he wants them to know. That ye may know, number one, what is the hope of his calling. Number two, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints read 19 if you're a christian please ready one to read what is the third thing he wants us to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power let me stretch it to 21 verse 20 that mighty power that was exerted which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places 21 far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but even that which is to come do you know the implication of obeying Paul's prayer or praying that Paul's prayer becomes your prayer let me tell you the truth there is no weakness for the believer who knows the power of God. Mm -mm. And this is beyond the realm 
of miracles and signs and wonders. There are infinite possibilities that can flow through the life of a believer. Paul is saying, I see your weakness in terms of your weakness. You are not able to be effective witnesses. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, the Bible says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. When it has to do with being a witness, it is good to know God's character. It is good to know God's ways. But in the face of curses and yokes, and the arsenals of darkness, the gates of hell that wants to prevail over God's people. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know his power. You need to know his power. It is the revelation of God's power that brings you into unquestionable dominion. 1 Samuel 17, 44 to 47. The story that I started earlier on. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, Goliath now, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Look at the reply of a young boy who had encountered the power of God. Then David said to the Philistine, and ladies and gentlemen, today that Philistine can be anything that speaks to you. It can be sickness, it can be life, it can be limitations. David replied the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. We can spend all night teaching what this name is. The Lord of hosts. The literal Hebrew translation is the captain of the angel army. Some versions will say the 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 captain of the angel army. If you read vers vers versions like um, um, maybe the message or New Living Translation, they will give you greater perspective as to this. It says, beautiful, I come to you message now in the name of God of the angel armies. Do you know what that means? It is an office that every president has. In Nigeria, we call it the grand commander. You see that now? That status that is given a civilian, even if he becomes president. You are in charge of the entire armed forces. And it is only at your final command that war is executed or prohibited. So he say, I come to you in the name. There is something I know about God and his power that when he gives a command, you are dead. It is in that name I come. Let's finish the scripture. Back to KJV 45. 1 Samuel 17, 45. Now you understand? I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Watch this. Reading 46 now. This day, this gentleman is not just prophesying. He's speaking from the abundance of his revelation about the God who gave him the bear, the God who gave him the lion, that he tore the lion and the bear. If you meet a bear in the forest, run as you pray. Run as you pray. Don't pray alone and stand there. Run as you pray because you most likely may not survive. Those animals are vicious. And worst is a lion. Do you climb a tree to be safe? Do you jump into the river to be safe? Number one, what will even take you there? That's what we must probe. What took you there? Most likely disobedience would have taken you there. Hallelujah. Are we together? This day, the Lord will deliver thee. Who else in the Bible made this kind of bold statement? Bible knowledge. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those three young boys, when they stood before Nebuchadnezzar, staring as that idol, that 90 feet statue made of gold, they said, oh king, we've been taught to honor, but in this matter, we will not respect you on that. Our God is able to deliver us, and he will, but that even if he does not deliver us, for sure, bowing down to you. <clears throat> Yesterday, I was tired, and I was just resting in the living room, um, just for a while, and then I saw this children's cartoon, and that was super book. And it was that story. I decided to watch it preparing for this sermon. I said, thank you, Jesus. And you see the children's cartoon, you, you, I mean, you needed to see what the power of God did in that cartoon. 
rubbish that furnace for nothing and the, the fourth man who was in that fire said oh thou fourth man please stand with me oh tomorrow as i teach hallelujah amen let's finish that scripture we're reading to 47 i hope you are learning it says i will give he's prophesying to goliath now i will smite thee and take your head from you and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel not just that there is a mighty young boy who is standing to face a giant it says and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear but the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands there are many mountains and many battles you will confront in your life as a believer. Many of you are standing before them now. Financial battles, marital battles, health battles. Are we together? And all kinds of things. In these days that there are mysterious devilish sicknesses. Someone just wakes up in the morning and you feel pain here. You just go to the hospital thinking they will tell you you didn't rest well. And they'll say, ah, we don't like what we're seeing in this machine. When did you start having this pain? He said, just last week. Say, this is already stage two. In the name of Jesus, the revelation of God's power will terminate everything my father has not planted in your body. <laughs> Hallelujah. To know the power of God. To know the power of God. You cannot bear witness to the truth. You cannot prove a God that you have not seen and known his power. When he told Moses, I am that I am, he did not stop there. He told him, he said, all right, here's what will happen. Moses, what are you holding in your hand? He said, a road. He said, cast it down. When Moses threw it down, it became a serpent. And Moses moved away from it. He said, draw nigh. Don't be afraid. Pick it from the tail. And Moses picked it and it became a rod. And he said, hold this rod wherewith you would walk signs and wonders. Put your hand in your bosom. Brought it out and it was leprous. Put it back. Brought it out and it was normal. That means anything you see Pharaoh doing, don't be afraid. I have used your own body to act out my power to you. Moses was on his way. He went to knock. Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, look at this stupid guy. You ran away for 40 years to the wilderness. And now you are back looking like somebody who was rejected with some careless message that the god of the hebrews you think we are stupid people in egypt moses said i don't have time to waste discussing with you he threw his rod on the ground pharaoh looked at him and said shame on you if this is what you brought to make me bring god's people out mm -mm. janus jambas bring your rod and they threw their rods and when it became a serpent do you know how if you don't know god well when the devil does what you think God can do, you will now run away. Nine plagues, ten plagues. Just because you saw one, does that mean that is all? There is a plague that Pharaoh and his wizards cannot reproduce. After nine plagues and stubborn Pharaoh said it's not enough, God said, I know what to do. They know the implication of firstborns. Don't worry, allow them. And that night, the angel of death swept over Egypt. They woke up with a lamentation. The firstborns were all dead. When you study now, uh, you study these things with caution. Don't just go and read something that will make you start seeing spirits. Are we together now? When you are exploring extra biblical materials, you do it with maturity and with wisdom. Are we together now? A believer who just got born again, there are books you should not expose yourself into. You would destroy yourself and you would dwindle your faith. But when you study, even if it's Egyptian cytology, you know that they dedicated their firstborns to gods. There was a mystery of the strength of Egypt that was shrouded in their firstborns. You could kill all their children, go ahead, but not their firstborns. So when God was visiting the firstborns, there was something that happened there. And at the end of it, Pharaoh said, go. Give them gold, give them anything. Let them go, let them go. Please leave this place. And as soon as they left, he came to pursue them again. And this time around, God made, he did something that Pharaoh wondered. The Red Sea opened. And when they stepped into it, the Red Sea buried them completely. If the Red Sea can bury, can bury Pharaoh, there is nothing it cannot bury. 
every spirit and every manifestation of darkness that keeps saying I will keep you bound your children will join you here your grandchildren will join you here in the name of Jesus the same way that sea opened Hitha and Tita and buried Pharaoh and his armies everything that is not by my God from my God and with the permission of my God I decree and declare let it be buried forever Now you understand David damn song. Only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There is a third part I have not learned. That's the part I want you to sing. I always sing stanza one and two. Sing it for us. There are chains. Listen. There are curses. But no evil can stand your power. Only a sure will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen to me. Power is the ability to cause change. Many times the ability to force change. Psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you ladies and gentlemen the end time church is a church of power power not just to become but power against power to become is the engracing that makes you become like Christ in terms of transformation Power against reveals the warrior dimension of the believer. The Bible says to put on the whole armor of God. You know how you put the whole armor of God? In your mind and by your speakings. That is how you put the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is a consciousness. And then the reality of it is activated as you speak with understanding. So Paul paints a picture of a warrior, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. He gives you the description of a warrior because he reminds you that the earth is not just a playground. The truth is that the, the Bible says that the flesh lusted after the spirit, the spirit lusted after the flesh and that consistently, day two, the mystery of Cain and Abel, there is a contention of the old and the new man. Satan, the gates of hell, fighting the church and the purposes of God. Believers, you can be wise in terms of the knowledge of principles, but can I tell you the truth? The days that are before us, please listen to me, we're about to pray. The days that are before us are times that will necessitate power, power genuine spiritual power you want to see the sick healed it takes more than sympathy you need power how god anointed jesus of nazareth acts 10 38 with the holy ghost and with power my bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them. The next verse says the people gave heed with one accord to those things which Philip spake. Why? Because they heard and they saw the miracles that he did. A generation of power will also be the generation of glory. To see your power and your glory. You cannot see glory without power hallelujah the spirit of glory was also the spirit of power ladies and gentlemen please hear me i have told you again and again and i will repeat it ladies and gentlemen please hear me do not begin your faith adventure in this kingdom especially within this complicated time as a man of god a businessman a leader without sorting the revelation of genuine power accessing power is progressive but there is a threshold measure of spiritual power you need to begin your journey because you are treading very very complicated and delicate spiritual terrains satan will kill anything he can kill destroy anything he can destroy and power is what may afford you the longevity of stay and impact 
Hallelujah. There are forces. I was we were having a wonderful time with our school of ministry students. By the way, I hope you are warming up for their graduation coming soon. We are going to announce it. It will be a beautiful time. These people have been. I think we should appreciate them. They have been so committed and very, very diligent. Hallelujah. I have not only read that there are spirits. I have seen spirits. I have encountered. I have shared with you some of these encounters. In the bit of time that God has given me serving his purposes in ministry. I have ministered to people and I have seen the extent of darkness and evil and wickedness. I have seen a bit of how Satan can go. How far he can go. As far as destroying glorious destinies are concerned. And there are times that I've seen graciously and with all humility the power of God. You don't know why I get excited about the miracle services. All services are, you know, services that bring blessings. But because we have dedicated the miracle service to minister to God's people. That in a moment, an age-long captivity lives just like that. Power. Hallelujah. Many of you, this is why you came to church tonight. I do not doubt your encounter with the character of God. There are things about God that you know, but there are things about God you do not know. Some of you, you are yet to encounter his power. Please try to listen to my message, the value of encounters. You need an encounter with the power of God if you want to sojourn in this wicked world. It takes power to clear every mountain that stands before you and to keep making strategic kingdom progress. There are forces that will not rest till you are brought down. And may God help you that you rise to the highest position. We're discussing this with our precious students yesterday, I think he was. And we're talking about the reality of the evil of the times. This is not to scare you, but the truth is the truth. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I think it was someone I prayed for. I don't know if I've shared the story here. And this person just hit a stone. Just something that looks like a stone. And then the leg begins to swell. And then you treat it in the hospital and it does not go down. Is that a stone? You went to school. Is that a stone? No. Arrows that fly by day. Noisome pestilences. Destructions that waste in noonday. And in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for someone here. If for any reason you have been a victim of any of these arsenals of darkness, my Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. I decree and declare in the name of he who died and is today exalted and seated at the throne of the Father, be delivered this moment now. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are regions where people do not rise. There are territories where people do not rise. There are regions, help that gentleman. There are regions where ministries do not rise. Help that lady, please. We're about to pray. Are we together now? Yes. I have seen regions. There are territories that have territorial spirits that define that civilization or otherwise. You do not understand power. You taught those regions. You will look like the city. They will bring you down. To reflect the city there are families where men are the women and women are the men and those who dare to rise beyond a certain threshold are caught short in shame untimely death for reasons you cannot explain this is not to scare you so you can find people who stay abroad for 20 years 30 years and they return back with nothing forces are real jesus did not hide the fact that those forces were on earth and they are everywhere. The whole world lieth in wickedness. This is where the ministry of power comes. No matter the quality of ingredients you have to cook, I taught you, if you don't set it on fire, there will not be a meal there. Mix the tomato, mix the rice, all of them will be at the mercy of fire. It's fire that does the remaining business. There is what your knife cannot do that only fire will do. There is what your, your chefry prowess cannot do. Only fire. Are we together now? Your knife cannot turn solid to liquid. No. But put it under fire and watch what happens. 
it is only fire that can expose the viper that is hidden in the log of wood when fire comes every viper hiding it must come out and be revealed to be dealt with for as long as there is no fire there the serpent will be masquerading there moving it in your body from head to toe and you are wondering what is moving in my body like this and the only thing they are telling you is that something is growing within your system hallelujah the fire of the holy ghost an encounter with the power of god let me recap one last time and then we'll pray that if you want to transit your knowledge from the unknown God like the men in Athens to a God that you know, that you serve, that you can boldly tell the world, come and join me, serve this God. Come and join me, serve this God. Come and join me, give to this God. Come and join me, love this God. Come and join me, worship this God. Come and join me, exalt this God. Come and join me, speak the purposes of this God. If you do not want to mislead a generation through ignorance, then you must transit your knowledge and stop building an altar, committing your devotion to an unknown God. He can be known. His character can make him known. His ways is one way he can be known. And finally, his power. Can I tell you, you don't see wind, but you can see the effect of wind. It will pick up a zinc. You watch tornadoes and they will sweep buildings that were put with cement and sweep them like children playing football. Hallelujah. This is the God we serve. You want a generation to turn away from idols and to turn away from other gods and look to the God of the Bible, it takes more than an evangelistic discussion. You will need to tell a generation, behold the power of this God who sent us. That power is translated in healings, miracles, restorations, that whole families come under that, that, that influence of his power. And in one day, one moment, Captivity is taken away from people. Healings are happening. You speak to someone. Can I tell you, on account of that manifestation of power, in one day, by the time God helps you as a preacher, as a businessman, as a politician, as a believer, as a witness, and you demonstrate certain levels of his power. I know people today with all due respect and humility, if not because they saw a display of God's power to the level that dumbfounded their minds, they would never come to church they would never come to God power is not just in terms of transformation creating change that someone who will tell you I had HIV this is the medical report I didn't believe in God because I was angry now here is my result I had cancer stage 4 now look at it medically verified how do you deny that someone you know who was on a wheelchair is today pushing his wheelchair somewhere and running around healthier than you someone grounded and left for dead raised up by the power of the holy spirit ladies and gentlemen we need our generation to see a display of his power again power reminds all men that there is a god that sits in heaven when men forget god he uses his power to remind them of his person there is a generation that may not seem to really respect character as important that, as that is. God has never used character to call the attention of a rebellious generation. He uses his power. When he gets the attention, he now begins to teach them his ways and then finally brings them into conformity with his character. Are we together now? When a rebellious generation or a generation that is bedeviled in any way when God wants to call their attention, Elijah did not stand there singing praises and dancing. It was the power of God. Same with Gideon. Same with the three Hebrew boys. The pattern has always been first a display of his power. I'm the only one who is saved in the family of 10 people. Let them see a demonstration of God's power beyond falling down and standing up, beyond just speaking gibberish as a preacher power supernatural solutions by the spirit of god that a man who you knew at january could not pay his house rent was not serious but he started coming to church by june 
God has lifted him, changed his story, wiped his tears, healed the sick. How bad? Ladies and gentlemen, men have not grown to a level of civilization where the power of God becomes of non effect. The power of God is at the fabric of human living and it will be forever. You may not need a typewriter now again. You may not need certain things. You may not need certain elementary basic kinds of phones because technology has gone. But one dimension that will never be outdated is the power of God. If you have the power of God, you are current for all seasons. Hallelujah. There are things that if you studied before with respect to the world now, you may need to reinvent yourself, but not power. It's a language that is understood in all realms. As for me, oh, I told you last week, I have made a commitment under God. I am not satisfied with the level of power. I thank God for the wonderful things he has done. But with respect to the heights and the dimensions we seek to step into, to represent the purposes of Jesus, there is a dimension of God's power that can save a nation in one day. We need to tap into that frequency. You are a man of God, you must thank God for what he has done, but not camp around it. Oh, I'm an evangelist. I go to preach, there are five people getting saved. Thank God for it, but you cannot stay like that. Five people in a territory full of idolatry, idolatry and all kinds of things? No. Read your Bible and see how nations were saved in one day. By the time five dead people rise up in one week, verified through your hands under God, with the glory going to God, it becomes too notable to be ignored. I've seen these things in my vision, so there are days before us, but it takes stamina and hunger and press. I've prayed to God many times and said, Lord, take away anything that will bring complacency in my life. The cancer of arrival mentality drive it out of my life let me seek you like I've never found you let me seek you like I do not know so much because it is true I do not know much there are still heights this was the hunger of Paul that I may know him that I may know him that I may know him a man who was killed he got up dusted himself and came back to life until his assignment was over have you tapped into that realm? Only a sure will reign forever. To your kingdom there'll be no end. There are names, there are titles, there are legends and tales of strength. But only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no way only a shoe only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no way only a shoe only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no way in one of my visions were wrapping up many years ago I was in a building no I came out of a building and it was like curfew was declared in a territory and I was standing there and every normal healthy human being had gone inside the only people who were outside are people who were deformed maimed distressed they were sitting in mats and lined up I found myself in the midst of people with all kinds of pain and sorrow not just medical situations not just biological deformities but these were people dejected like the men of David and when I looked at them I said what kind of thing I mean it was an ugly description it's not something anybody who loves God should see and be happy no matter even if your heart is a heart of stone it will be crushed till it becomes a heart of flesh and I saw them, they were helpless. And I remember hearing a voice, an audible voice in that vision. And he spoke to me and he said, heal them all. This is not just physical healing, the healing anointing alone. 
that was one of the things that made me to go and start looking for the materials of Charles and Francis Hunter an Ampi Semple McPherson and I said no there's something our generation has not touched let's go back the secret of the future is in the past we need to go back and I began to study I still have their materials today it's still a project I'm on I don't know what those people did with God that brought them certain levels of grace hallelujah certain levels of grace this man carried grace they carried grace may God revive us oh may God revive us in the name of Jesus may God revive us may God revive us and make us empowered to be able to heal our land hallelujah some of the miracles we celebrate today sincerely they were the people who were the workers and the ushers in those ministries that worked in it now we thank God for what he has helped us do the things we celebrate today will not even be clapped at during their days they were men who were like gods Smith Wigglesworth raises somebody who was dead and kept the person and tells him to jack back to life he falls down like a pack of cards lifts him again he falls down and by the third time the man sniffs and then he comes back to life that was a casual miracle a group of people look at um, not Catherine Kuhlman now what's her name the other woman Maria Woodward Eater and they insulted her and she just looked at them and said the Lord judge you and the tongue of one of them protruded like a cancer and remained there till a committee came together and brought her to come and apologize and she just slapped the tongue and it went down documented in history and fear came upon all you see that now the mockery that has come to the house of God is because one person has not been used as a warning that there is sanctity and honor that surrounds priesthood and that is not just by debate and shouting and all of that you see ladies and gentlemen I'm challenging you tonight there is power that can come upon you as a businessman you will do business like a spirit not like an individual again that there are heights you will scale you will do certain things that will surprise men and people will have to ask you and say how are you doing this and you will tell them that beyond my intellectual prowess which is important there are certain graces that have been stored to be poured like vials from heaven upon a generation my charge for you tonight is that you desist from knowing and uh, from from advocating an unknown god a god that is filled with gaps in your conviction gaps in your confidence that your life is plagued with all kinds of fear you may preach with confidence but live in fear you may talk with confidence but live in fear COVID was a strong lesson to us that something was wrong with our convictions that something about our confidence needed an upgrade only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no way only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end three more times only a sure will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end only a sure This is now the reason why I asked you to stand when I was praying the Lord told me that there's a few people that he's going to be raising as signs listen they are going to be demonstrators of his power signs a few people and I I first prayed for myself I said Lord I must become one of such people now I want to pray for you Lord I pray that you find men and women in the midst of your people men who will be signs signposts showing men the possibilities that are captured in this divine life therefore i stretch my hands in the name of jesus christ 
by the election of grace i decree and declare that the grace that makes you a sign and a wonder in ministry in your profession in business in family may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now rest upon you now your life ceases to be ordinary from tonight a sign and a wonder your life becomes a bible for many to read a compendium of the manifold wonders of god in the name of jesus christ only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no for some of you the sign that will rest on you is the favor of god for some of you the sign that will work will rest on you is the healing anointing for some of you the sign that will rest on you is strange influence inexplainable influence for some of you the sign that will rest on you is speed that cannot be described for some of you the sign that will rest on you is a demonstration of the gift of the spirit at a level that men have not seen for some of you the sign that god will give you is empowerment in your mind extraordinary intelligence but by all means may that sign be represented in your life i and the children that the lord has given me the bible says we are for signs for signs for signs there are worshipers that will become signs you will not just sing songs there will be mysteries from your voice to the nation there are preachers that will not just be preachers as it were but signs and wonders your life becomes a case study that men use your life to learn god financial signs arise favor signs arise intercessor signs arise in the name of jesus christ listen when you want to go to a restaurant that you have never been before when you are close to the vicinity and you're in doubt as to whether to turn left or right you may not have seen the actual building but you look for the signpost the signpost number one tells you you are near and then it directs you more accurately into it I'm about to pray that prayer that someone who is confused about God confused about how favor works confused about how consecration works confused about how the spirit of revelation functions in a man confused as to how men can be custodians of the mysteries of God confused as to how God can trust men with nations in the name of Jesus tonight may your life be an explanation to divine mysteries May your life be an explanation to divine mysteries. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer I speak over you. Three. His character, knowing God. His ways, knowing God. And then his power. For many of us, you have desired to know God. You have fasted, you have prayed. Now God has created a bearing for you. This three is not all to know about God, but as far as this dimension of our existence is concerned, God will only be captured and revealed to men under these three channels. His character, his ways, and his power. Any route to knowing God beyond this, as much as scripture reveals, will only tilt you to error and divination. That any man who seeks to know God must explore God through the platform of his character, the platform of his ways, and the platform of his power. I decree and declare every dimension of that revelation that is currently deficient in your life. I call upon my God who is also your God that by his spirit who has been mandated to be the revealer of all things, even the deep things of God, may the spirit of revelation rest upon you. May the spirit of revelation rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
you can know God accurately when you know his character you can know God accurately when you understand his ways you can know God accurately when you know his power the proof that you have encountered his character is that there is a conformity in your life to become like Jesus Christ in experience an experiential conformity is proof that you have encountered his character and then the absence of fear fear is replaced with reverence in your life that you refer him but not fear after the flesh number two when you understand the ways of God the proof is excellence as far as living in the cosmos the superiority of the way of God when you know the way of God are we together now you will triumph as far as destiny actualization and fulfilling the purposes of God is concerned but then your dominion in experience is established when you know his power now you access in truth the grace to demonstrate and to validate as a witness that he is king that he is lord and this one is very important especially because of the context of the world and the civilization that we live in now this world needs to see the power of god beyond falling down beyond rising up as wonderful as that is supernatural solutions superimposing systems and structures that your words no longer become barren nor impotent your life becomes an explanation to divine mysteries that as he takes you from nation to nation you literally enter a nation and keep it at a standstill not just in terms of the carnality by the flesh but that your life you become such a lampstand a witness indeed there are many, many Christians in Abuja, many children of God, sincerely so, but there are few people who have truly known God in his character, who have understood his ways. There are many things we complain about that should never be prayer points. The answer to them are shrouded in knowing the ways of God. And yet, in the midst of all our services and all that we do respectfully it looks and seems to me like evil continues to multiply within our horizon it seems they have no honor and regard for our consecration it seems they have no honor and regard for our loyalty our profession of faith something is wrong there needs to be a restoration of authentic power the church or the believers the men in Athens they were devout superstitious religious zealous sincere dedicated but all that was to an unknown God now he calls us to take away that inscription and to rewrite for ourselves and for a generation to see that God can be known and he can be known accurately if Paul did it we can do it we can disciple and mentor a generation methodically to know God by revealing his character, showing them his ways, and ultimately demonstrating his power. May that be our reality beginning from now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let me make the altar call. You are here and you've heard me teach. And Jesus is speaking to you that it is time to make it right with him. You want to know God, John 17, 3. Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. It is always a joy to make this altar call, and there are many people you came to church, and you need to run to Jesus. I'm going to make two calls in one. You have never made this decision genuinely, and you are saying, Apostle, please give me a chance to make it right with Jesus. Or number two, you are saying, I want to rededicate my life. I begin my counting now, one to five. Please leave your seat and run with boldness and confidence. Come and stand here. Let's celebrate them as they come. Do not wait for someone to be the first. Please stand. God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Come come to run to Jesus the Bible calls him the way the truth and even the life it says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away are you still celebrating salvation 
come to Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, he's able to give you a new beginning. Doesn't matter how you have moved in defiance as far as the will of God is concerned. Come. God bless you, young and old, come. Male and female, come. From all walks of life, it's a joy and a pleasure for me to lead you to this Jesus. Now he's not an unknown God. He seeks to be known as great and manifold as he is in his wisdom and his ways. In as much as there is no searching of his understanding, I want you to know that he can be known. Do not ever leave your Christian experience with this gap and this ignorance that God does not want to be known. As mysterious and as mighty, as manifold, as vast as he is. It is true that we will never exhaust learning him. But he designed a curriculum for us in this side of his kingdom that can help us know him sufficiently. Beyond the shores of this, our civilization, we will be given another manuscript as we advance in knowing him. But for now, he has left us with a compendium of his character, his ways, and access to his power. You're joining them, join them quickly. I want to lead you to pray. And all the overflows, please do same. Walk to the front of your projector screen. And for all who are following from across the globe, any nation watching by television, watching by internet, it's my joy and honor to lead you to this Jesus, the Father and even his Son, whom he sent as a mediator, a reconciler. He's brought us now through a new and living way. We do not walk in fear again. We are now the family of faith. And for these precious ones who are coming, after your declaration of faith and by the integrity of scripture, the Bible lets us know that a translation happens from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Thank you, by the way, for making this noble decision. Thank you for summoning the courage to come. You're doing this before Jesus. Please lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this after me, believing with all your heart that he's hearing you. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i'm a child of god can you hear me from tonight I'm a child of God and I go forward ever and backward ever in Jesus' name. Apologies for the breaking um, sound. My sincere apologies. I'm sure that something may have happened. Please accept our kind apologies in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, here's what I want you to do for me. There are counselors that are by my right, which will be your left. Please, all of you in concert, would you move and you have a quick word. They'll have a quick word with you and you'll be back. Let's honor them as they go. <laughs> Koinonia, is this the best you can do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please rise up on your feet. Now, um, just two announcements very quickly. Hallelujah. By the way, my apologies again. I'm sure something may have happened with the power. Um, I'll do it. I'll do a proper announcement by next week, the miracle service. Um, but our worship team, our miracle service for September will be an extraordinary one because we're going to be having Saturday and Sunday together. Saturday is going to be a worship experience. Our worship team together with, yes, hallelujah. It's going to be um, a reign of God's glory in this place. I worship people, all the people that God has raised from this ministry alongside many great vessels of God will be here. And it's going to be a time of uncensored worship in the presence of God. That Saturday, uh, not this month, now next month, I'm just announcing in, ad in advance. Um, so that's very important. And then by the miracle service next, next week, 
I will come with a word, especially for our American and Canadian families. I know that many of you have been in suspense for when we are going to come. My sincere apologies. Um, we are a global family, and so I will just give a word just to guide and help us know what it is that we need to do. And all other regions, several regions, are said, how about us? By God's grace, we'll go around the earth, whether virtually or physically. The most important thing is that Jesus comes through us. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, um, please be patient. Any region that God has not granted us grace to visit physically, we're not exalting other regions above others. Um, we know that God will grant us grace. And remember, this assignment is for the whole body of Christ. So we only have portions of it, and our mandate is to be obedient within our job description. Hallelujah. But eventually, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the whole earth as the waters the sea in Jesus' name. So next week is our miracle service for the month of August. It will be a time of prayer, the word, healing, and deliverance. Please make sure that people who need a touch from heaven, that you bring them your loved ones and even people you do not know. Hallelujah. And families you know who have been under all kinds of bondages, invite them. And for those who are online, make sure that as many connect by faith and let's exalt the name of Jesus as we see that his kingdom come in the lives of men. And for tonight, thank you so much. I just spotted two people. I, I, I only know um, two of them. My apologies. And my salutations to all the men and the women of God who have been here. Um, Apostle Babs, thank you so much. The Lord bless you. And my dear son in the gospel, Pastor Ike, all the way from Asaba, God bless you in Jesus' name. Every other person, the Lord bless you. And thank you so much for taking out this time to be here. We are a house of honor and our international guests and everyone who has come, not just in ministry, but in any walk of life at all. We thank you for making the time to worship with us. This is Koinonia. And our prayer and blessing for you is that you keep going from glory to glory. First in the knowledge of the Lord and then let it extend to victory in every aspect of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our life. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.